So, uh, uh, pleasure to be here, a real pleasure actually. Um, uh, thanks the organizers for the invitation. I, I also want to say that I'm uh, particularly touched by the fact that I'm speaking in the company of two people with whom uh, we early on started uh, in our early years in Cologne, uh, Andreas Rathbuch and uh, Michael Reit. That's, uh, that's a special pleasure. Um, uh, what I want, want to do is something which, which will be uh, perhaps a bit boring for some of the people here because they are ma mainly immunologists in the audience, but not entirely. Uh, I want to talk about the basis of uh, how adaptive immunological memory in B cells, I will focus on develops, and then uh, tell you one uh, particular aspect of it, uh, stress this, which I think is particularly important. So, uh, so just uh, uh, just to start off, uh, B cells are, are, are small cells. They're shown here, uh, loaded with antigen, which is fluorescent and binds to receptors on the surface of these cells. They are, they are resting uh, cells. And these cells are characterized by uh, many things, uh, many receptors they have. And the most important here is the, the B cell antigen receptor, surface bound antibody um, with these signal transducing units. And um, the, the main thing here is that, that each cell has its own receptor, which is own variable region. And that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's further exemplified in this uh, 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 scheme here, um, uh, namely that in the de development of these cells, um, uh, uh, there are gene rearrangements which are individually specific, specific for the cells, so that every cell ends up with one particular gene rearrangement for heavy and light chains. And therefore, all these cells in the naive uh, B cell compartment, uh, each one expresses its own receptor. So we have, uh, we have uh, tens of billions of uh, B cells in our body uh, circulating and sitting in the uh, lymphoid organs, uh, waiting to, be, uh, to, to meet their antigen. Now, um, uh, this is a, a general scheme of how uh, memory, B cell memory develops from, uh, from naive B cells. Um, it all happens through antigen activation. It is much more complicated, of course, other cells involved, T cells, dendritic cells, and uh, you name it. But uh, what happens is that uh, after antigen contact, the, there is expansion of two branches, uh, really, in two branches. One is an expansion of uh, cells expressing uh, germline encoded antibodies uh, outside of germinal centers. Uh, they participate in the memory B cell pool. <clears throat> and there's a second branch, uh, uh, that's what I'm going to focus on, um, the cells which, which go through uh, selection uh, in germinal centers and uh, are generating somatic antibody mutants. That, that's, uh, that will be the main uh, uh, part of this uh, short introduction. Um, uh, and, and that happens uh, through, uh, through a process of somatic hypermutation of the variable region genes in the germinal center reaction. That generates then the secondary antibody repertoire post immunization in which, uh, in which the, the variable region genes of the antibodies are uh, plastered by somatic mutations. Uh, which have the capacity to increase or decrease or, 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 or uh, alter the specificity of the antibody which was originally expressed by the native, uh, by the naive cell which was triggered by antigen. And um, all of this uh, happens in a, in a, uh, a complicated, very complicated structure, uh, the so-called germinal centers. Uh, there are, of course, uh, hundreds, thousands of them uh, in the secondary lymphoid organs after antigenic contact. 
And uh, in these uh, B cells are drawn after energy contact into these uh, structures, into the so-called dark zone of the uh, German center where uh, extensive proliferation of these cells happens. And this process of somatic hypermutation is set in motion, which uh, changes the variable regions of these cells. And then uh, the cells uh, uh, migrate to the uh, to the dark uh, to the light zone of the germinal centers, where on follicular dendritic cells and then later T cells, uh, B cells are selected uh, uh, for recognition of antigen. And uh, uh, cells which have mated, so to speak, have gotten the right uh, uh, mutations, can uh, go uh, several ways. Uh, one way is to go back into the germinal center dark zone and then uh, continue this process of mutation and selection and so forth, several rounds of this. And then uh, by certain signals, the cells can uh, go out of the leave the germinal centers, and then uh, they, they come out as either memory B cells with these uh, mutated receptors, uh, or they come out as long-lived plasma cells. Andreas Gradbuch uh, will speak much more about this. Uh, these are long-lived plasma cells which secrete uh, antibodies over, over, uh, over long term. Uh, you may note uh, in this slide, uh, is, is cartoon wise drawn, that uh, memory cells uh, uh, come out of the ger germinal center already relatively early in the germinal center reaction. Um, uh, plasma cells uh, they, they tend to be uh, maybe higher affinity often and, and uh, come out uh, uh, preferentially at, at later stages. Now, um, the, with respect to, to memory, I, I just want to make one uh, point very clear. There are, there, one has to distinguish uh, between lifelong immunity. Uh, this is something one often sees in, for example, in uh, the case of latent viruses, for, for example, Epstein-Barr is such an example. You get infected once, uh, the, the Epstein-Barr virus persists uh, over life. And uh, it is reactivated occasionally, it leads to immune stimulation or, uh, over time. And, uh, and therefore you get, a, you get lifelong uh, immunity because of, uh, of uh, repetitive sequential immune reactions and uh, generation of reactive cells. Uh, what we uh, what we really want to discuss uh, in the rest of this talk is true immunolog immunological memory. That is to say, um, uh, memory which is independent of the immunizing antigen and is based on long-lived memory cells. That's uh, that's what we are going to uh, uh, talk about for the rest of this uh, talk. And I, I really want to make only one. Um, uh, uh, but I think very important point about these uh, long-lived memory cells. So, um, uh, so, so, so the main thing about these these memory cells is they, they, uh, that they are uh, long-lived resting cells, and uh, you see an example here. Uh, the, the only experiment I'm actually showing, uh, where you immunize a mouse with a certain uh, haptin carrier conjugate, doesn't matter, it's called NP. And then uh, you, you look uh, after immunization, six to eight weeks after immunization, over time uh, at these memory cells in the uh, peripheral system. These are splenic memory cells, but it doesn't really matter. You could also look in the blood, for example. And uh, what you see is that, uh, is that over time, over a long time, actually, this is uh, uh, five months uh, of life of a mouse, which is uh, significant. You see a uh, 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 very constant uh, 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 presence of these memory cells uh, in, in the peripheral organ. These are, these are antigen-specific memory cells which just persist here without much change of frequencies uh, of cells, number of cells. Um, uh, and, and not shown on this slide is that these cells are really as resting as cells can be. They are, they are not uh, undergoing proliferation. They are not regenerated. They are, they are really long-lived cells. Now, um, uh, what we wanted to test in, uh, uh, it's now over 20 years ago, 
uh, but it's it's an experiment which uh, we, which is worthwhile to uh, remember. We wanted to to really test whether these cells are antigen dependent, because that's a that's a key uh, question. Um, the, if the cells would always be antigen dependent, they would uh, be continuously selected, and affinity maturation, affinity selection of the cells would be a, 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 a basic principle of the phys physiology of these cells. So, so we 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 tried to do an experiment to test this, and uh, the experiment was to uh, induce it by an interferon induced uh, genetic switch. Uh, in the cells, which I'm not going to explain you, but you can uh, look at it if you want in the in this uh, original paper by Mauyama et al. Um, we induced uh, through, uh, through a genetic switch, uh, switch of the specificity of the antibodies in these memory cells to a different specificity, phycoerythrin, PE, which uh, the mice had never seen uh, during their life. And then, uh, and then we, 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 we tested whether we could switch specificity and whether the newly generated PE-specific uh, memory cells would now be also long-lived. And uh, that is the experiment. Uh, when we do this switch, uh, we indeed get, uh, get about uh, a fraction of these cells switching the receptor from, 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 uh, from NP to PE. And uh, these uh, cells uh, continue to be resting cells, not shown here, uh, uh, but they express the PE receptor, but they, are, they, are, they don't bind NP anymore. And they persist exactly in the same way as the original cells, which had been generated by NP immunization. So that that is uh, that is the that is that is the experiment. It says that these long-lived cells they persist. They are generated. They persist in the immune system for 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 long times, They're waiting to be reactivated by antigen. And actually, we've shown that when one takes these cells and puts them in culture together with T cells, um, sorry, together with T cells, they will produce an, an uh, 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 sorry. They will produce. Somehow my my thing goes automatic here. They will produce uh, PE specific antibodies, and not NP binding, and these guys will produce NP binding antibodies, not PE specific. So that's uh, that's the scenario. Um, the the German center generates somatically mutated uh, memory B cells and uh, long lived plasma cells. Uh, these cells here are uh, in, in the initial phases often very low affinity to the antigen. They have not undergone uh, yet affinity maturation. That's also part of it, but the only part. And they recognize uh, antigens, uh, uh, surely also the immunizing antigen, but, but, but often with very low affinity, sometimes undetectable. There's recent work of the Nussenzweig lab and actually many labs uh, showing this. And so uh, when we come to the, uh, to the functional significance of this, um, then uh, the German center uh, BISA response uh, saves as a basis for, uh, of course, somatic antibody diversification. So we get uh, increased diversity. Uh, among these, we get uh, the, the high affinity antibodies for the immunizing antigen. That, that's the famous uh, affinity maturation in germinal centers. But uh, I think as a, as a main uh, uh, part of it, uh, we, we get uh, activation of a new repertoire of antibodies around the immunizing antigen, the specificity around this, but in anticipation of what I call the unknown. Uh, and, and what I mean by this in the special context of this uh, COVID-19 uh, conference is uh, the specific potentially for pathogen variants arising in the, during the uh, infectious uh, incident in which they arise, but also perhaps uh, anticipating pathogen variants, which may, may come back like Omicron did in, 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 uh, in the uh, uh, COVID-19 case at later times in the human population. 
So that's uh, that is the short message and uh, just one acknowledgement. I, I thank uh, a student of mine, Andreas Zach, who participated in, uh, in putting this whole thing together. And then uh, thank you very much for your for your attention. And uh, I, I take of course questions if there are any. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much for the very nice uh, introduction for laying the foundations of understanding the visa response and its refinements. This was really excellent and absolutely essential for understanding uh, the particularities of the uh, of the COVID uh, immune response. So I can see some questions here already. So the first one, let me see, is this the first one here for Michael Red or am I skipping someone? No, Hans Georg Ramense, I'm skipping. Uh, is it easily possible to detect antigen-specific B cells in human blood? Uh, is it easily? Uh, oh, yes, of course, it is. It is. It is possible. One one way to to, to detect memory B cells is to to stain them with antigen. Of course, that uh, that has been uh, used a lot. Uh, technically, uh, and, and many of the uh, present monoclonal antibodies against, say, HIV or so, are, uh, are directly isolated from uh, single memory cells um, uh, through staining with, uh, with HIV antigen. So, so yes, you can detect them. There are also markers, of course, and so, yes. Yes, thank you. Then Michael Reed. Yeah, Klaus, uh, this experiment was done with IgG memory B cells, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. you think that this is the same with IgM? No, that uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you for the question. I mean, that, uh, that's that's uh, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, the IgM memory cells have uh, have uh, attracted much recent uh, attention. We have been uh, uh, actually in the mice pretty unsuccessful in detecting them in substantial numbers so we 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 don't know uh, but i think it would be very interesting to look at this yes ab absolutely yeah yeah thanks uh hello christina your question please <laughs> yeah it's very impressive that you showed that the lymphoid structures in the lymph node are so important in SARS-CoV-2 it seems that there seem there's an deterioration of the germinal center reaction because you see weird B cells and plasma cells in the blood. So could you envision an inflammatory condition that is driving cells that normally would stay to the lymph node into the periphery? In the, into the periphery by you mean in the uh, blood. Well, you can you I mean you detect uh, you detect memory cells uh, in the blood. Uh, I think uh, usually they are sitting in niches, and Andreas is, uh, is our great expert on this. Uh, many of them are sitting actually in the bone marrow. Um, the, uh, many are sitting in the spleen also. Uh, and not so much. Uh, they, are, they are really special niches for them. And um, it's very important, of course, to, to understand the, the structure of these niches and for the, for the physiology of these cells. Um, I, I think uh, that, you know, one of the most uh, dramatic features of these cells is that they are, they are resting cells. They are really resting cells like naive B cells are. And, and, and a long-lived living on, on certain signals which... Uh, uh, which we partly understand, but not really understand, and uh, I, I think that is a that is an interesting area of research. Okay, I mean we should really move on, but I would like to abuse the chairs right uh, and, and and take the opportunity to ask you a question myself. What is your take on uh, the uh, the the timing of vaccination? So after which time, in your opinion? Should uh, uh, as the second uh, vaccination against Corona and the booster uh, take place? <laughs> this is a good question, but I just want to answer with a with a. Uh, I I don't know so much about this, but but you know I have my ideas also. But but I want to say that I think that this anticipatory. Uh, uh, the role of somatic hypermutation of uh, of uh, uh, of generating a repertoire around the immunizing antigen uh, that is that is in my opinion playing out now in the 
in the COVID-19 vaccinations boosters and then appearance of, of specificities for, for other variants like Omicron. We have seen yesterday, I think uh, quite a bit of this uh, can potentially be explained uh, through this kind of, uh, of mechanism. I think that that is really the secret of the German center response.